I, I go back to when you're thinking about retirement, you're playing with the Cardinals, and you said, hey, you and I were friends, and you said, can you help me get started yeah. in, in broadcasting and kind of show me the ropes? So I come up to your house and show you how to put together a board, and we call some games off the television. But part of the rite of passage for me to be able to do this with you was to go play basketball with you at the Y. <laughs> And the first thing is, like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go play basketball with Kurt. Like, let's hope he doesn't get hurt. If he gets hurt, like, I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing was, you put a mouth guard in. I'm like, okay, this dude's serious. Like, I knew he was competitive about football, and now he wants to talk about broadcasting, but now we're going to play basketball. But your competitiveness is what stood out to me. And we're playing at the Y. You kept scoring on They couldn't touch him, man. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the funny thing is that a lot of people, when they watched me in between the lines on the football field, they never saw that piece yeah. because when you're in that type of leadership role, it's like, okay, don't ever let them see you sweat. You know, there's a competitiveness that, that drove me. Obviously, you don't get to this point without being competitive. And, you know, I've, I've always just kind of taken the approach that I don't do a lot of things. I, I don't have a lot of hobbies, but everything I do, I want to be great at. It. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter if I'm playing pickup basketball. I don't, it doesn't matter if I'm 50 years old. I, I want to play and I want to compete. To me, fun is being able to compete against someone and, and having that opportunity yeah. in a moment to react to what that guy's doing and see if I can outthink them or outplay them. And that's fun to me. And my wife doesn't quite understand that. She thinks fun should be just laughing and giggling and having a good time. It's a different kind of fun, but it is something that I've tried to apply to everything. I do want to talk about our relationship a little bit because I'm, I'm curious a couple of things. Uh, you started coming over to our house for a for a Bible study. We had about 20 or 30 guys over at the house, but you came over, and I remember one time you had had a meeting with then-President Barack Obama, and so you were a little late, and there was a new guy there, uh, one of my neighbors, and I think we met for like two hours that night, and shockingly, you talked a lot uh, during those <laughs> <Shocking>. two hours. <laughs> Shocking. And it was funny because afterwards, my neighbor said, man, who was that dude? I, I swear I've seen that guy before. I'm like, that was Kurt Warner. He goes, you got, I'm sitting next to Kurt Warner for two hours. I had no idea it was him. And he's talking about this meeting with Barack Obama. And I had no idea. Like, who's this dude? <laughs> do you remember what you – forget the Bible study. What, do you, what did you say to Barack Obama? Do you remember that? It was a nice conversation early in his presidency where um, the conversation was just, you know, how can we pray for you? You know, how, how can we be there for you from a distance? And, you know, I'll never forget the you know, comment he made is pray that I get it right is all he said. And you know, I thought that was pretty cool that it was important to him to just get it right, whatever that looks like. Because, you know, as you go into that kind of role, you never know what getting sure. it right looks like as you're faced with a lot of different things. But, you know, that's how it came about. It was a nice brief conversation to, um, you know, kind of compliment the call after the Super Bowl. And, um, you know, it was, it was kind of nice to, to be able to follow him and know what the heart of the man was all about. I was – distraught, furious after the Super Bowl. Um, I'm coming down the elevator. I'm walking through the tunnel in Tampa. And and I, I'm like, okay, I think I see Kurt out of the corner of my eye outside the locker room. I'm like, don't look at Kurt. Like, they just lost the Super Bowl. He's probably furious. Just don't look. So I kind of looked out of the corner of my eye and did a double take and looked again, and you were smiling. So I figured, okay, he's looking at me, and he's got a smile on his face, so I'm, I guess I should engage. I came over to you, and I'll never forget you said, I felt like, you know, I did everything that I could this year. And you had such a positive attitude in a time where I'm sure most people, including me at the time, and I didn't even play in the game, were still in shock over what had just happened. As you look back, do you still have that same view of that year? Okay. Or are there things about that game or about that season that you still play over and over in your mind of, <laughs> man, I wish I would have done this differently? Well, I think you always have that. You know, when you don't get the end result that you want, you're always going to think and relive things. But here's the thing is that unfortunately in our culture and in our sport, we've come to the point where we feel like you can only win if you have more points on the scoreboard. And – Something that I've learned in life is that you can win when you lose. And that, to me, was what that journey was all about for me and for that team, was what we accomplished that year and where we were when I got here and the mindset of everybody in the locker room and the organization. And there was no belief 
there was no hope. And we could have said whatever we wanted. There was nobody that believed we would ever have success. And to watch a group of guys come together and start to believe that they can do something that a short period of time before they never believed – 